that's why when people ask me what were some of your most demanding missions, yeah. they're actually our, our peripheral missions because you were not authorized to overfly that adversary you were looking at. If you're doing an overflight, like I did a number of Cuban overflights in, in the Middle East and elsewhere, you've already been cleared to overfly. So if you have to uh, deviate from your path because of some aircraft problem, uh, there's no diplomatic problem because you were already overflying their country. Uh, where if you violated and went over a country that you weren't supposed to go over, there could be diplomatic uh, problems. And why were you flying over the DMZ? Like, what were you trying to gather? Were you trying to see like military movement, nuclear potential? Um, you know, well, give me an idea. With that camera, I can see 36 miles into the north. Yeah. And 36 miles in the south. If I'm if I'm carrying my radar mapping mapping the ground, I can see 100 miles. Now with 100 miles, I can't see. Uh, with radar, I can't see you. And and with the optical, I could identify a truck or a tank. With the radar, I'd have to say, well, that radar return is about the size of a tank or a truck. But I could see 100 miles in, and it didn't matter if it was day, night, weather. The radar would work. At the same time, because of the altitude, let's say there's a, a radar that they use for defense that's 200 miles from me. I can pick it up, and I can tell you exactly where it is, and I can tell you what kind of frequencies it's working on. I can see out to about 320 miles in any direction. We were the greatest collector of our time because we were like a huge vacuum cleaner going through. And... Uh, Matter of fact, sometimes we flew what was called a coordinated mission. And what we did, we were the target. This was particularly against the Soviet Union because they really wanted to shoot down an SR. So what we would do, we would not overfly them, but we'd come at them in a kind of a provocative way to stimulate them. Well, as we were stimulating them, there were satellites overhead. There were other airplanes in flight. There were ships at sea and ground sites all tuned, watching us and collecting all the information because the Soviets often would come up on frequencies they never used for any other airplanes or any other threat. And they, we thought they were probably wartime frequencies or they would, they would come up with a radar site or they'd scramble some fighters and we could get information on how long did it take up from the time that we stimulated them until those fighters could uh, get somewhere where they could try to make an attack.